you got side, Jesse? You wanna go outside? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I had to let Jessie out because she's been nudging me. I'm trying to, to catch up. So I had to finish this one. And then on my pink coop, I'm so behind. So I thought I'll catch up a little bit. And all morning, she's just nudging me, nudging me, nudging me. Like, I want to go outside. I want to go outside. I want to go outside. But it's not going to happen, not until after lunch. So she can just wait. So today we're going to do the split stitch. And you're going to choose your favorite color. Um, and we're going to do the bicycle up to here. And then these um, two lines as well. But I need a bit of help. I can't, I can't choose one. So I'm thinking I might want to do this just like off-white color because there's so much color already that I'm afraid if I put another color in like a teal, is that going to be too much? Or maybe like a dark one, a dark gray. I don't know, I can't tell. So what do you guys think? I've got pink here as well, but I think that's a bit too bright. So what do you guys think? Should I do the gray, the green, or this like off-white? What do you guys think? Two for the green. Maybe I'll just go with that. Hmm. You know when you just can't choose? That's me. I just can't choose. Right, that's three for green. I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to split my threads into maybe four strands. Four strands. So I don't want it as bulky as this one, which is all six, because we're gonna go um, into each of the stitches. So it's gonna kind of make it double bulky. So I'm just gonna split my thread. Oh, there's a knot in this one. Also, um, somebody, I don't know if it was a person. Is this still classed as a stitching along if I haven't started yet? Yes, that's fine. Um, so we've got like a mailbox flap. So like if you, most of you are probably in England because it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And if you're in, in America, then it'd be really, really, really early. But um in England, we have, or at least I have, a mailbox slot in my door. So it's just like a slot that goes, that's in the door, the front door. And that's where all your mail gets delivered. And someone has ripped off the front of it. So I don't know if it's wind or if it's a person. But it's really made me angry. So like we got back from, um, this is a big, huge knot, so I'm just going to make another one. Do it again. But, so we got back from Naples and I looked at our front door and there's just a hole there. I was like, what happened to our like flap? Our like mail flap? Gone. I'm so angry. <sighs> so we've got this house on the corner and I call it the rough and, the rough and ready house because it's like a council, a council owned house. And um, they've got about nine people living there. And it's just a two-bedroom house like ours. And I don't know if it's, like, them trying to be funny. Because I know that they've, like, started 
some stuff with other people. They've never like spoken to us or anything, but I don't know if it's like one of them or if it's just the wind. I don't know. God, that took ages. I tried to split this one and it's just like a big fat knot. Okay. So yeah, it's really not what I wanted when I got back. And then the thing is, is like, because we don't really have those in America. I was like, what's that called? Like mail slot, mailbox, mailbox slot, letter box, letter slot, letter hole. I have no idea. So I was trying to get like, look on B&Q website and see if I could get something delivered, but I don't see anything that like looks like ours. So I think I'm just going to have to go there and be like, how do you do this? How do you install a letter, hole, a new letter hole slot? I don't understand. Ugh. Yeah. So like I did letterbox and it showed me like boxes that you would attach to the outside of your house to like put your letters in. And I want it in to fill the hole in my door because I don't want a hole there. Letterbox flap. I'm going to Google that then. All right. I will get started stitching. I promise. Goodness gracious. So it's like, I'll have to like post a picture later because it's not just the flap that's come off. There's like a whole surrounding thing that's like also come off because the flap doesn't attach to anything now. It's just like, I've got it right here. So like we didn't, we didn't do it. So like, I don't know where they get it from. This is like how it came with our house. But like this part is meant to like, um, have the little hole, I mean, a uh, pole, you know, so it like can lift open and the whole outside is gone. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm clearly just really affected by this. <laughs> 10 minutes talking about a goddamn letterbox flap. Sorry. I will, I will get started. Okay. So I'm going to start from the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way up to the top and then down on each of these. And this is the split stitch. So you're literally going to split the stitches. You can do an outline first if you want, um, or you can just fill it in. I might do an outline just to show how it is and then maybe come back and fill it in a little bit so you get to see best of both, you know? So you're gonna come down Make a stitch. They can be short or long, doesn't matter. And what I like to do is come up this way and then go back down into the stitches. So you're going to split the stitches. Do you see? Let's see if I can lift up my soup cans. Do you see how I'm literally putting the needle in between the stitches? So they are split split stitch. Let me just turn this down a little bit because I feel like I'm shouting at you. So there's one. It gives this kind of effect. Um, I'm using four strands. I wanted something a little bit, a little bit thicker than three, but I didn't want it so thick like six. Now, some people like to go up through like this, but I find that it pushes it, um, pushes this stitch up. And I, I don't like that. I don't like the way that that feels. I like to always go back down. Yeah, so Tash from Hatchling Makes has just said, I find going up through the stitch is so much harder to split it nicely. So if you can see, it's making a kind of like nice little pattern here. And when you go up through the bottom, up into the stitch like this, you might get only one thread on one side and all the other ones on the other. Sometimes they get a bit snaggy which is not that nice either. So 
I like to go down. And I think the good thing with the stitch is that it doesn't have to have a pattern. Like if you do it in a line, it will make a pattern. You will see a very clear pattern, almost like a chain stitch, which we haven't done because I couldn't fit it in anywhere. That made sense. Um, sorry, I forgot to get a drink. Um, I'm going to go right next to this and then add the black over top. So it's meant to be like a little part of the bike, but I made my bike a little bit thicker today. So now I'm going to go back this way and come back down just so that you can see. How it looks and you're just going to fill her in. So for this part, you don't have to have, like for some of the stitches, there's a clear method and a pattern and a way to do it. Like the fly stitch, you have to do it that way. The fern stitch, you have to do it that way. Um, even with like the satin stitch, it, it does have to be right next to each other. It has to. This one, you don't have like a pattern like that. So I don't have to go down here and come back up there because that's what I've started. That's, that's the pattern I've started. You don't have to. You can go anywhere as long as you come up through the stitch that you've just done to fill it in. And that's why I kind of like this stitch. You can make longer lines, shorter lines, and they all kind of blend together. It's a really nice filler stitch. You can also do it in the shape of whatever you want. So meaning if I wanted to make, at the moment, I'm just going straight up and down. But if I wanted to make this look a bit more three-dimensional, I could do them, oops, like this to show that this is a round bike, that it's a pole. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to make a couple little tiny little stitches, like one, two, three, one, two, three, you totally could. So it's a really great filler stitch and it, it's a really great way if you wanted to show direction and make it look 3D as well. So I just said, if you're in the States, it's going to be super early. And my mom's just joined, so I don't know if you can see. She's called Robin Redbreasty. I made that name for her when she first got Instagram a really long time, really long time ago. And it's her birthday today, so feel free to say hello. Send her some birthday wishes. She might be private. I don't even know. Tash says, my aim is... My aim today, to be caught up with this by the end of the day. Girl. Before you got on, Tash, I showed um, my pink one, and I'm so behind. Look at it. <laughs> I'll move over. Ah, <laughs> so much work to do. <laughs> Her name's Robin. But, yeah. So I have so much left to do. I'm just, like, doing it out of order now because... I just want to get it done so I can see what it looks like, you know? So it must be, she's a teacher, so she must be up really early. Girl, we'll be stitching together then. And I've got a pet portrait to do as well. Um, back in October, like the very end of October... This guy contacted me for a Christmas present for his girlfriend. Her dog died. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so sad. Of course. Like, obviously. I mean, I like to make pet portraits for pets that aren't dead because <laughs> it's, not, it's not a fun feeling, you know, to have your pet die. But um, so I did it, and she loved it, and it was her Christmas gift. And um, he said, thank you so much. Well, I've just got another email from him, and her cat died now and I'm like oh honey I was telling David about it and I was like almost in tears I was like her dog died in October and now her cat's dead and everyone's dying around her I 
we're too sensitive. So if you find that your stitches are getting too long, so like some of these are, they're definitely getting too long, like this one, whoa, whoa. Just shorten them back up again and you can do another split stitch in the middle. I've got yellow. So if you're just joining, today we're doing split stitch. I've used four strands. You can use three if you want to do more split stitches. You can use six if you want it to be a bit more bulky, more three-dimensional a little bit. But I did four. Oh, Mom, you're getting so many birthday messages. That's so sweet. Her favorite meal is Thanksgiving dinner. So yesterday they had turkey and stuffing. I'm assuming sweet potatoes and cranberry. And they had a whole Thanksgiving meal. You have me as your daughter, mom. Of course you're blessed. <laughs> she said, you are all so kind. I'm feeling very blessed. And this one, I'm just going to split little stitch because I can see that this is a really long stitch right in the middle. And I don't like that. See how it's kind of all blended together, filled it in. I could have done a satin stitch across if I wanted. I could have done um, the brick stitch again if I felt like it. But I quite like this one. It's a, really, it's a nice filler stitch. And it's great. Like We did the split stitch up here as well, I think. No, this was long and short stitch. Just kidding. It's very similar, except the long and short stitch, you normally do long and short stitches right next to each other. And then... This one is, um, you go into each stitch. So they shouldn't be laying next to each other. They should be laying, oop, in, into each other. Uh, stitches by Meg. I stitch up to the leaf. Should I stitch under it? If you can, you can. Um, if not, go around it. Meaning, if you, if you can stitch under, you can, then go ahead. Um, or you can just stitch up to it and go around and just continue. It's up to you and, and how your leaf looks. And also, like, can you be ours to do it? Just to sit under it? Maybe not. Maybe you don't feel like it. Oh my gosh, thread chicken. Here we go. I've only got this little bit left. Am I gonna win? Do you guys do that? Do you play thread chicken? So even David knows about thread chicken now. It's when you have just a little bit of thread left and you think that you can finish what you have with a little bit of thread. So you play thread chicken. I don't win very often. I'm just gonna move it over to tie because I know I'm gonna hit the screen again all the time. Yes. Every time I win, I always message David like, oh, I just played thread chicken and I won. And he's like, well done, babe. Because when I was um, first making patterns, I had him try all the stitches to make sure that um, the way I explained it, what like made sense. So, <laughs> Uh, as he was doing it, he was running out of thread and he's like, oh my God, I'm running out of thread. Oh my God, I'm running out of thread. And he was getting really stressed out. And I was like, it's okay. That's called thread chicken. So if you feel like you want to take a chance, take a chance and see if you can make it, then go ahead. <laughs> but if not, then just make a knot and just make a new one. He's like, I think I can do it. 
Okay, so most of the time when I'm threading my needle, I'll just leave a little tail like this and then I'll knot this end. So this end will have a little space where there's two. Because I used four strands, I'm left with two strands. So what I'm gonna do is make the ends meet. It's not my favorite way, to be fair. I think Jessie's heard the chicken because she's at the fence with her head tilted to the side. Like, what? What is that noise? So I'm gonna put the two ends together so it makes four strands and make a knot in the end. And then pull my needle all the way to the end so that it's a continuous loop. Can you see? So it's four strands all the way to the end and there's no little tail at all. Yeah? So this will help if you always pull your needle out, meaning you, you have to re-thread your needle all the time. Sometimes I get a bit too carried away with my stitching and I pull my needle out. Uh, especially if it's kind of three, two, or one strand. So this is a good way to, one, keep your needle in, but also um, use those two strands so you don't have to split another six strands and waste. Well, it's not really waste because I keep all of them anyways, but... So I'm just going to do a little bit more until I run out of thread, and then I'll leave you guys to get on with your, is today Monday? Monday. Monday. Goodness gracious. And if this part isn't wide enough, so mine's not wide enough, that's fine. Um, I'm just gonna go over it with black to make a little notch there. Um, also notice, God, I can't stop talking today. Also notice that I'm making different length stitches so that I don't go in and out at the same place and make a pattern. So you don't want any of the splits where you went up, uh, down through the thread to line up or you'll end up having, uh, you know, like a line there. Does that make sense? I just think that it gives a smoother look when you vary it. Outlines embroidery, she lost thread chicken yesterday. It's devastating. Absolutely devastating. And then when you go to do this one, you can just um, go straight up to it. You don't have to go in into it. So you can just end all your stitches here. So it looks like a, it looks like a pole that's attached, you know? She says it's always when you have one stitch left. Oh, it is. And that's why it's so annoying. So annoying. It's like, if I could just do one more, if I could just do one, one more, I know I can fix it. I know I can fix it. Yes, to finish the whole piece as well. Ugh. And then you have to get a new, a whole new piece of thread just for that. Ugh. It's so annoying. Even David was like, oh, I'm almost there. I really don't want to cut a whole nother piece of this color. I'm like, now you know. Now you know our problems. Did everybody see the picture of Jason Momoa embroidering this morning? Right? Outlines and Brody says, I'm a living for that photo. Yes, girl. Same. Same. It was like every time I see it, I will repost it forever and ever and ever. Okay, so here we go again. I'm almost running out of thread. 
Ugh. I'm telling you, Thread Chicken, it's a game that you play with yourself, where you play yourself. Because you think you're going to have it sorted out, and then you don't. You're like, I will win. And then you don't. Okay. Let's make these a little bit. Um, don't do this little handle part because we're going to do that later. So like I said, you're just doing this one, this one, and this one. Yeah? I hope that it's bright enough because normally I move the table a bit closer um, to the window and to the skylights, but today I didn't. I feel like it's a bit dark. Like on my screen, it looks a bit dark. All right, guys. That's all from me. I've got to go take Jesse for a walk. I've got to have breakfast because I didn't even have breakfast yet. Oh, man. Sleepy. I got things to do. But I hope you guys have a great day. I'll just undo this so I can, um, one, show you how it looks, and two, finish it uh, without the stand. So that's what we've got. So you should have this finished, this one, and this one of your bike. Yeah? All right, well, you guys are the absolute best. And I can't wait to see how you did and what colors that you chose for your bicycle. Like, I love them. I love your pattern so much. I'm not going to lie. I've been, like, scrolling through uh, the hashtag, like, almost all morning. And just being like, oh, you're so beautiful. You guys are so good. Okay, well, have a good day. And I will speak with you later. All right?